Hello everyone, my name is Mustafa. Welcome to today's edition of Managing Postgres SQL Database on Cloud SQL. For today, we would explore running Migrating to Cloud SQL for Postgres SQL using Database Migration Service. Before we get started, an overview of this lab we all know that database migration service provides option for one-time and continuous jobs to migrate data to cloud sql using different connectivity options we've explored using the ip allow list we've used upc peering and there's also the reverse ssh tunnels in this lab we would migrate a postgres sql database running on a virtual machine to cloud sql for postgres sql using a continuous database migration job and we use VPC peering for connectivity. When you are migrating a database via database migration service, it requires some preparations of the source database, such as creating a dedicated user with replication rights, adding PG logical database extension to the source database, and granting rights to the schema and tables in the database to be migrated as well as the Postgres database to that user. So for this job or for this task, we we'll create and run a successful migration job. We we'll confirm that the initial copy of the database has been successfully migrated to our Cloud SQL for Postgres SQL instance. We would also explore how continuous migration job apply data updates from the source database to our Cloud SQL instance. After that, we would now promote the Cloud SQL instance to a standalone database for reading and writing data. That means we'll cut off the connection from the source. The objective for this lab would prepare the source database for migration, would create a profile for the source connection to a Postgres instance, e.g. a standalone Postgres SQL. We'd also configure connectivity between the source and destination database instance using VPC peering. Thereafter, we would configure firewall and database access rule to allow access to the source database for migration. We would create, run, and verify a continuous migration job using database migration service. And finally, we would promote the destination instance, which is Cloud SQL for Postgres SQL, to a standalone database for reading and writing data. As usual, Let's get started with our lab. We click on Start Lab. I'm not a robot. Choose the cars in this image. And then launch the lab. After launching the lab, we open this lab in an incognito window, as usual, because we don't want the lab to be opened on our personal accounts. Copy the password from here, paste the password here, click on next, I understand, so here is our dashboard that I'll be using for this account, I'll just agree to the terms and service. This is the dashboard for our profile or our project for this lab. So let's get started with the instruction. Here are the setups. We've done the setup. The next thing we want to do is we want to activate our cloud shell. So to activate our cloud shell, you use the gcloud port list and the gcloud config list project. So let's copy this. Here's our cloud shell. Click on it. So we click on it, you can see that it's loading. So continue to provision our cloud shell machine and thereafter it will connect to our cloud shell instance. Let's get this here. Yeah, we are on our cloud shell. So the cloud at list to this. <coughs> so this is our account to show that we are on our account. And the next command is the cloud config list project. You have to see the active project. Yeah, so this is the project. This and you can confirm that it tallies it what is there. 
and it allows it all to pay, which is fine. This is majorly important for accounts that have multiple projects. So we are good. The next thing we want to do is typically when we are doing any database migration service jobs, we have to enable the database migration API and the service networking API. And um, we want to configure the cloud cloud SQL for Postgres SQL to talk to our Postgres SQL on Compute Engine. So we have to like set up a networking API between them. So as first, we we'll check if this is enabled. You can come here and search here. Click on Enter. Let's see if this guy is enabled. So here we have. Click on it. So we can enable this. <coughs> enable this by clicking on enable and you can see it's enabling and when it's enabled we now have a option to disable which shows that it has been enabled so the next thing we check for is the service networking API you can use the search box or you can just use um, the libraries for the enables API also you can go to the libraries and search for it. Just search for service networking API. Yeah, so here we are. And from here you click on this one. Then you enable it. So when it's enabled, you have the option to disable take note of that. If you have the option to disable then it's not enabled at the moment. So we'd wait for it to enable. Yeah, so we have the option to disable now, so it is enabled. Yes, that's fine. So we've completed the setup. For tax one, we want to prepare the source database for migration. And when we are preparing the source database for migration, it typically means we want to install and configure the necessary PG logical database extension. We also want to configure the standalone Postgres database to allow access from Cloud Shared and Cloud SQL. Then we'll add the PG logical database extension to the Postgres, others, and Gmengen database on the standalone server. So we have some database on our Postgres SQL on, on the virtual machine. So we'd add the PD logical extension to those. And after that, we'd create a migration admin user with the necessary application permission for the database migration and granting the required permission to schemata and relation to the users. So, for the first sub tax under this, we want to upgrade the database with the PG logical extension. So, the PG logical extension is, is just a logical replication extension for Postgres SQL. It allows users to replicate data between two Postgres SQL databases in an efficient and scalable way. And this PG logical is based on the publish or subscribe model which means that the data that is published from the source database and subscribed to by the destination database. So this allows for high scalability and the publisher and subscriber can be scaled independently. And that is why it's typically a requirement for us when we are dealing with Postgres SQL database migration. So as first, we we'll go to our computer and virtual machine, then we want this command when we connect to our um, virtual machine which has the Postgres SQL database. So from here, navigation menu, your compute engine, virtual machine instances. When we are here, under the connect, this SSH, click on the SSH. So we are SSH into the virtual machine. It's transferring the SSH SSH keys. Then we we'll authorize this SSH connection. After authorizing the connection, no one the command that we we'll just copied, which is to install the SSC Postgres, the necessary PG logical database file. So after we've installed those, the next thing we want to do is we we'll download and apply some additions, which are like configuration files, to enable the PG logical extension. And also restart the Postgres service, and this is typically the command that we copy here. Paste them here. 
and they get a one for us so click enter after this yeah so after doing that the next thing we want to do is what this command i've done is that it has also um, downloaded and applied some additions to the postgres sql configuration files and we have them here so you can take a look at them pg underscore hba.conf it added a rule to allow access to the host and the postgres sql.conf this command set the minimal configuration for the pg logical to configure it to listing on all addresses so that's fine so the next thing we want to do is we also want to append and we've appended the necessary relevant files to, and the postgres service sql has been restarted which is what we did in the previous step for now we want to launch the psql tool which is the tool that we use to access our postgres sql database copy this command paste this here so you can see we are in our postgres db when we are in postgres db then we want to add the pg logical database extension to the postgres orders and the key main database so for that we just copy this paste them here click on enter so we've added the pg logical extension to this three database but meanwhile you can also confirm the amount of database that we even have on this um, postgres sql database by using this command so here are some of the database that we have here are the database we have on this postgres sql database we have the human db the holder the postgres this is template zero and this is template one these are typically maybe configured by postgres by default and we'll not be migrating them we are just interested in migrating this thing so that's how we typically know the, the database that we want to add the pg logical extension to it so you can run this command to see the database that you have then input these commands on the database that you really want to migrate after that we want to create database migration user so you have to create a database migration user and give him admin a migration admin privileges so that it's going to handle the migration for us so also we want this command here and click on enter so after that we've done that we've created the user just with the um, sql command so you can see it's created a user migration admin with the password this after that it altered the database orders it set the permission to owner under owner it set it to migration admin so the migration admin owns the order and after that it also order it also alters the role of the migration admin with replication so the migration admin can now um, replicate data so the next thing we want to do is we want to assign permissions to the migration users so then we are assigning permissions to the migration users we would first grant permission to the pg logical schemas and tables for the postgres for the postgres database so copy this command what's just doing is that it's granting the necessary permissions on to is granting necessary permissions to the migration admin user that we just created so that he can help us run the database migration that we want to do so run out this command click on enter and there after that we would also grant permission to the pg logical schema and tables for the other database So we've done this one on the pit on the postgres database you know we have taken we are interested in taking database the postgres the others and the grid mail so we've done the necessary permissions on the postgres we'll do the necessary permission on the other also click on this on this command so what this is doing is that this is just like use the other database so this would connect us to the other database and this will grant necessary permissions that we need on this click on enter yeah, so we are done the next thing we're also going to do is we'll also grant necessary permissions to the public schemas and tables for the other database so here are the public schemas for the other database grant necessary permissions on them to the migration admin so that this can also help us to alter 
in the order the order table so this other database is like the necessary one and would you know along the line what to confirm if our job really works continuously so we have to be able to alter the source database also that will be before we promote, promote the cloud sql for postgres sql to a standalone instance so let's copy this <coughs> paste them here we can enter i'll also grant the necessary privileges just taking a look at it so that i don't make mistake okay then after that we would also grant the pg logical schemas and tables to the gregman database we've done that here for the others we've done that here for the postgres this is just some additional configuration that we did to the order because we want to be able to edit the order using the migration admin okay so let's do the same thing for the gregman i'm very sure i'm not pronouncing it correctly but that works here so after that we would also grant the permissions to the public schemas on the gregman database by using this command then click admin so we are done for now so at this moment the source database is definitely just um, ready for migration we've prepared it for migration and we've granted the migration admin user all that is required for the database migration service to migrate the postgres the others and the gregman database which are the three databases i want to migrate so the next thing we want to do is we want to make the migration admin user the owner of all the tables in the other database for the same reason that i mentioned previously so that we can edit the source later while we are testing our migration so all these um, tables in the other database would grant permission to the migration admin so copy this command paste them here so here yeah, just like the list of the tables that we have in our orders we have the distribution center inventory item other items the product users and we grant permission to everything so this distribution center inventories items others product and users then click on enter so you can see now that this permission has changed from this owner it, we have changed it from postgres to migration admin so the migration admin now owns each of all these tables which is cool so after that we can exit the postgres user session for now because we've prepared the source at the moment so let's um, exit we are now back in our virtual machine directly so let's confirm if we've done the stacks so we can confirm to check our progress and we are done for tax two we want to create a database migration service connection profile for a standalone postgres sql database this is just typically how we've been creating a connection profile previously so here is what we are going to do because we'll be using the internal ip address of our virtual machine that we have here so that we can connect to the postgres sql on this virtual machine so we would be needing this internal ip can decide to use the external ip for connection but for this lab we are chose to use the internal ip so i just leave this tab open and duplicate a new tab so while i while i duplicate a new tab i have to go to the database migration service so that we can create our connection profile just drag this down more product here keep going down this is database migration I'll just pin it up so that I can see it here. Connection profile, click on it. So here we are. You can go to migration jobs, but like I've already said, we cannot create a migration job without having a connection profile. So you have to first have a connection profile. You can use a connection profile for multiple jobs. The connection profile is just to know the source that we are doing so that we can connect to the source. So that the database migration service can connect to the source typically so create our profile start creating our profile the database engine that we are interested in here is postgres sql the connection name this is the name that they want us to use so yeah yeah this is the name they want us to use this is our connection name the connection profile id gets auto-generated our host name will be the IP address 
so you can see it you can see it here they want us to use the internal ip address here that would represent our host name so the internal ip address that we copied so since we've not copied our own we just duplicated a new tab you'd come here copy the internal ip address then include it as the host name on our connection profile for the username what username do they want us to use they want us to use migration admin feel free to use your discretion while you are doing this in production but if you want this lab to work you typically have to follow the instruction here so that you can get the full score so you also copy the password and don't forget that this is the password that we also um, generated and granted to the migration user um, admin when we were doing it so this dms1 code one has code we take a look at this code that we wrote here up so yeah this is the same password they got that to the migration admin here so let's go back to our tax store. after that to select our region this lab wants us to use a us list one so we we'll just change our region to us list one and uh, after that we can create our connection profile should take few minutes for our question for our connection profile to get created and we'll be done yeah our connection profile is created after that we can now decide to do the migration of the jobs so let's see if we've completed this task let's not get hired over ourselves yeah tax also complete so we're done with tax two for tax three we want to create and start a continuous migration job so now let's go to the database migration in real so this is the name of the migration job name they want us to set click create migration job after i click create migration job input your job name then the job id gets there for the source database pick your postgres sql for the database engine we are using cloud sql for postgres sql so we are doing for this distribution center typically should still be us is two one because we are that's our region for this lab so for the destination database engine we've done this for the migration job type we choose continuous yeah it's a continuous job there's no option for one time at the moment here yeah. so it's a continuous job so after that you just um, click save and continue because these are how we really need to do and that gets started from one so for defining a source our source is the connection profile that we created so you can see that if you don't have a connection profile you have to still create one here so we've done that before so we just um, talk to it from here then click on the next point so under creating a destination we would create a destination our destination is cloud sql for postgres sql I forget that so we've done this this is the destination id they want us to use so we are moving for postgres sql on the compute engine to cloud sql for postgres sql so copy this this is the destination id so replace that with it take notes for the our password we are using super secret when you are doing this in production of course you'd be using your the password of your choice so we are this database version is fine 15 is that what they ask us to use okay they ask us to use 13 so let's choose that I believe this this region is fine the zones can just choose our us system one which one do they want us to use okay us is one d as our primary zone so let's flip that we would also want to configure a private ip and public ip connection so click on private ip and would allocate and connect so we can allocate and connect him. so it may take um, a little while for this to get done located our connection and this just took like one minute or two minutes i fast forward it and i'm at the end now so this lab wants us to choose this machine type then ssd 10 gigabyte storage capacity is enough for this and you can just take a look at all this destination configuration then click on create and continue so yes create a destination so while our destination is running we can choose how we want to connect to this 
which is a um, VPC pairing. Yeah, the lab wants us to use VPC pairing, and the VPC we are using is also the default. But before we can continue, our destination has to be done. So I'll fast forward it and see at the end. Here we are. Our destination has been successfully configured and it took around five to seven minutes so you may take longer than that but if you are doing it correctly it definitely get done and it will throw a error if it does not so you are fine the next thing we'll do is configure and continue click on configure and continue so this is just configure the database the destination database and thereafter we are typically done but before we click on the create and start job what we want to do is since we allocated some ip address we want to go to the allocated ip address range that we choose and instead of using um, a generic ip address range in in our config files on our database we just want to set in those values alone so that it can be more secure typically so how we are going to do is taking a look at the instruction this is what they want us to do so we'd we'll go to our vpc network vpc networking pairing then we'll copy the ip address that we have there under the imported routes then we'll now add that to the config to the configuration files that we have on our database so join me as i go there so i can just leave this tab so i don't um, get messed up with this one and duplicate so if you okay yeah. if you mess up with this of course you still see it under the migration jobs as a draft and you can just click on it and continue so it typically saves it as a draft so what, what i'm going to do here is go to the go to my vpc network on the vpc network pairing so here i am i click on this service networking googleapi.com so imported do it this is the destination ip range so this is the ip range that we are interested in i'll just leave it there and come and copy it where when i'm done so Going back to this one so that I can access my so that I can access my cloud shell. How do we connect my cloud shell? Here we are on our cloud shell. So for this for this one, in the terminal session on the virtual machine instance, so we are editing this configuration file. So this that we are actually doing, we are not doing it on the cloud shell, we are doing it on the virtual machine, which is the SSH that we have, the SSH connection that we have here. So here we are just come back here and paste this code click on enter so here is the nano containing what we want to edit so you scroll down so that you can edit the necessary things so scroll down down yeah so under this is the part that we are interested in under this part that has 0, .0, .0, slash 0 so this accepts all ip addresses all IP address range and we don't want it to do that that's um, too uh, that's too much that's too much permission so just I'm um, going to replace it with the one that was allocated for so you can just erase all this and come back to this service net path copy the destination IP range here and come back to our patch machine paste it here so after that we are typically good to go so the next thing you just do is control o not command then enter then control x so that means we've edited the stuff on our nano if you want to test that if you are not sure if you do not believe you can access this command again click on it and look at what you are doing so when you go down so see what you are doing you see that it has actually changed and does not have the previous value so you can see it has changed which shows that we are actually where we want to be so just go to exit this yeah we've done that and um, like i said this is not this is not necessary for the migration to work so it's just a good practice that we make our source database more secure during the database migration process so it's going to automatically restrict access to all these um, ip addresses that are even outside the allocated ip address range so that's fine so let's restart our Postgres SQL service click this and run this command so we started that so after restarting we can now test and push our migration job we can test it and we can start it so here is where our migration job is 
let's test it no necessity test also but let's test it let's see it's a good practice to test so here we are we've tested it then create and start yes create and start the job so it's creating our job and it may take a while for the status to also change so the status migrates from different different um, positions so let's see so you can see this started this it's on non it was on non starting before or not started and now it's on starting so it's going to keep going till it gets to running cdc in progress so when it's run, when it gets to a state of running cdc in progress that means we are where we want it to be so i'll fast forward it and see you at the end also here we have and we can see the current status so it has a um, running cdc in progress which shows that um, it's done and it's starting the continuous job okay and you can see this yeah like the status that it went to from not started to starting to running full dump in progress then to running cdc in progress so we are running cdc in progress so let's check if we've actually completed this tax so this tax is also complete and um, we are good to go to the next task. So for task four, we want to confirm the data in Cloud SQL for Postgres SQL. And we want to see if it actually um, migrates or if it actually synced to their self. So because it's a continuous job, that means any alteration to the source should get replicated in the destination. So what I'm going to do is go to our databases, which is um, on Cloud SQL. So from here I can come here go to the cloud sql and we'll see our sql instances here i'm just going to dismiss this so this is our sql instances so this is the one that we just created we have it here so under our database let's see the databases that we have so you can see that these are the database that we wanted to migrate and it is now migrated the gregman the others and the postgres sql they are now migrated which is what we want so we are good to go and the next thing we want to do is we want to connect to the postgres sql instance so when we connect to it we now try to alter one of the values there and see if it's um, replicate so there is our postgres sql instance the one that which is like the one on the destination the one we choose our destination so go back to overview so this is the postgres sql instance that we have on cloud sql so move here open in cloud shell to auto populate the code after that click on enter authorize this guy so it will allow at least our IP. Okay, so now we are prompted to put in our password, and the password that we are going to use is super secret. So we've previously set this password, which is the super secret, and we set the password in when we were doing the configuration of our of our database migration. So we set the password on the destination part to be super secret. You can just go back to that step where we set it so that we can all be aware of what we are doing yeah so under the destination instance so this is what we use our root password super secret and that's what we will use to also access the destination that we are currently accessing so we have tax for so, so here we are press the password click on enter now we are in our postgres sql database on cloud sql so let's access the others the others this is the others database when we access the other database we also have to input the password once again just copy it here paste then enter then we are inside the other database so when we are there let's take a look at the distribution center you know we we actually we showed some tables that we have under there so here is one of the tables which is distribution centers then you can copy it this is just a pretty direct sql command select all from distribution center so let's see 
uh, here we are this is the longitude the latitude the name the id you can see that this is what is currently here this is what's currently here we'll try to add one another um value here from the source database this is the destination database because we are accessing this from our cloud sql so now let's go back to our virtual machine we we'll go back to the database, then we'll try to alter these values and we'll see if we replicate here. So that's what we are just going to do. So the next thing we'll do is you can just um, exit this guy for now to come back. Okay, that's good. So let's go back to our cloud shell and see if the data has actually changed. So to do that, we have to first update the standalone source data to test for continuous migration. and. The first thing we are going to do is we would connect to our source Postgres SQL instance from the cloud shell. So copy this, paste it here, click on enter. So the password for the user migration, take, take note of what we are doing. We are like trying to access the SQL database that we have on our computer engine, but now we are accessing it from the cloud shell. You know, typically we would go to the XSH part and check it from there but now we are trying to like check it from the cloud shell so you it, it asks our password and don't forget our, our our cool password which is this thing copy it here click on enter paste it then enter so we are also in our database now but this in this case this is our source database so we'll go to this one which is what we have here so now we are under orders we are in orders so before before i do that what i'm just going to do is i'm going to run this previous command also again so that you'd see that this is what is on the this is what is on the source and that's also what is on the destination before we edit it so when i run this command once again let's see so you can see we have the same value we have the same details that we have here as what is here in this case from here it, this is our destination in this case now this is our source we have the same values so now let's alter our source so to alter our source we use the insert command we use the insert command if that's changed the values there so let's confirm if the values actually change so you can see that now the value has changed we now have a added details which is what we just added here this as the longitude, this as the latitude, this as the name, and this as the ID, and we have it here. So the next thing we would do is we'd just exit this with slash k. So after exiting this, then we'd go to sorry, that was a mistake. So this is the other slash. So after editing this down, we'll now try to access our source once again. We'll try to access our destination we were on our source before. So let's access our destination don't forget that to access your destination you can just open from cloud shell and it will populate the command so i'll just press it again so it has populated the command for us then we'll click on enter so it's still going to allow list our ip once again just like it did previously when we tried to enter it. so yeah it's time for our password now and don't forget the password that we use super secret just for the one that we set on our destination press it here click on enter now we are back in our destination so the next thing we are just going to do is we are going to try to use the database that we are interested in don't forget that the database that we are interested in is the orders that is where we change something from so you can just um, input your command here slash c orders and add your column click enter so it's asking for password once again the password is super secret paste the password there enter and now we are on our order so let's confirm if we run this command from the destination if we are going to have this miami included so that's what we're going to do it's so going to copy this command here paste it here let's see yeah so you can see that we have miami now which shows that it's conti it's continuously replicating the data from our source to our destination which is really what we want and we have it now so after that that's pretty all we need to do we can exit this guy so exiting it we've exited the database 
So the next thing we want to do, let's check if we are done with this. So since we've ascertained that our records are automatically replicated from the source to the destination, we can now decide to promote our Cloud SQL. That's the progress Postgres SQL on Cloud SQL. You can decide to promote it to a standalone instance. So in this case, we'll cut it off from the source. So when we are migrating, when we've migrated now, that means we want to just start talking to the the new the source now like the destination the destination will now become like the new main database that's majorly the point of migration so we've tested that the data replicates automatically and continuously so now let's cut it off and make it a standalone database so for tax five we'll just go to our database migration job and go promote the job so here's our database migration job Here's the job we are interested in. So you can click in into the job. After clicking in into the job, then let's try to promote this job. So click on promote. Yeah, so it's going to disconnect the source. And you can also check the progress of your promotion, of your job promotion. You can check the progress of your job promotion here. As fast forward, you can see here at the end. Our migration job is successfully um, promoted and it's now completed so it has disconnected the source from it and you can see the status is now uncompleted and that's typically everything we want to do for this lab and let's check our progress once again here we are done so congratulations on completing this lab an overview of what we've done we prepared the source database for migration we also created a database migration service profile service connection profile for a standalone postgres database thereafter created and started a continuous migration job we now confirmed the data in the cloud sql for postgres sql we confirmed that it's really replicated and after we've confirmed that we now promoted the cloud sql to a standalone instance for reading and writing data so thanks very much for staying true to the end of this lab if you really enjoyed this lab give it a like Comment your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know what lab you want me to do next. And make sure you share this video to your loved ones and your friends and colleagues doing similar things as we are doing. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.